Every year in the NFL, it's a new team. As far as goals go, we have one. Putting a f***ing ring on our finger. Welcome to the Buccaneers Observer Podcast. This is Ralph Phillips. I'm Molly Bay. Today is Victory Monday. We are talking about the 25th of January, 2021. What? We are going to the Super Bowl. It's just, it's so surreal. It is insane. There's That intro is so apropos. You mm-hmm. know, it is, we have one goal and it's to put a ring on our finger. We're going to do it. You know, someone commented on one of our videos about how one of us is always super excited during the intro and the other one is not. <laughs> I'm just going to say it's not that I'm not excited. It's because I have no rhythm. And this is true. It's, uh, that's, and that's one of us. Yeah, it's so I don't funny. dance normally. What's that? I don't dance normally. No, she doesn't. Mm-hmm. She has no rhythm. Mm-hmm. Our, our kids can keep time with anything. Mm-hmm. Molly can't Mm-mm. at all. Mm-mm. It's very, it's very strange. It's also she can't listen. It's one of those things where she can't listen to anything in a delay, mm-hmm. and also she can't listen. You can't listen to music without hearing the lyrics too. Like you can't focus out the lyrics. Oh yeah, like on one <laughs> instrument. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. No, you can't do that. Very strange. Anyhow, what a intro that was. We mm-hmm. are extremely hungover. <laughs> I'm gonna say, uh, it everybody. A, well, it, I was all like worse than last week. Like what, last week was really bad. We, it was uh, like a two day hangover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow will be. I am exhausted. I am just exhausted. I was so amped yesterday, and we were so nervous before the game. You know, we, it was close to the point of throwing up, and we get there, and the game started. It was just so much energy. I'm pacing, and you know, I'm a pacer. So I had the, this whole back end of the bar that I just walked back and forth, back and forth. So I probably got three miles of stepping in. How many steps? Check my, check my step and watch. Tracker. My uh, tracker. I was not nervous until I got on Twitter and had to read all you motherfuckers who was so <laughs> nervous. And it just, y'all made me nervous. I wasn't, I was fine until I got on Twitter, like 30 minutes before the game. And then I was freaking out. Freaking out, man. Freaking out. Yeah, we did uh, a lot of drinking, did tequila shots. Yeah. You know what? Next, uh, for a Super Bowl, we're going to do Crown uh, BA. That's his drink. Oh, yeah. Crown yeah. oil. Why did we do that? I'll, Crown and Coke. Yeah. So that's what I'm drinking for a Super Bowl. And maybe we'll do some shots. We'll see. We suggest everybody drink Crown and Coke next okay. weekend or the weekend after next. Two weeks. Two weeks. 13 days, man. It was going to be a crazy 13 days. I'm wearing my 47 John Lynch jersey in respect for the previous Buccaneer winning team. I think I, I've got quite a few jerseys from that team. And uh, I don't I don't wear them that often anymore. You know, I moved on to more current players and stuff, so... I, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna rock the old school jerseys for this week probably, and I'm wearing my pewter uh, Tampa Bay Tom Brady jersey for the Super Bowl. I think. Are you gonna wear your Jason Pierre Paul jersey? I am. Yes. Absolutely. I'm That's so, so sorry. nice. Man, did he rock it out? <laughs> Him and Barrett. And my, you know, I wanted to say this because you know I love getting receipts. I wanted to say this in our preview that Barrett and JPP were gonna have a great game. You just knew it. Yeah. Well, well mm-hmm. with Vita back. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I told you that right after we did the podcast. I said, man, I didn't say anything about Barrett. And they <laughs> did, man. They showed up. Barrett was just about every play he was getting to Brady. Yeah. A couple times he, he got right at him. One time he even hit his arm, caused an errant pass, got three sacks. JPP got two. Yeah. I mean, Vita didn't show up on the stat sheet at all, but he was so impactful yeah. anyway. Yeah. It was so much fun watching. Every time he was in there, I was just watching him. And he just dominates linemen. Just dominates them. They're just totally unprepared. There's they can't do anything. There's nothing you can do There's nothing to you can do. for him. Mm-mm. And, you know, our defense stepped it up, man. Stepped it up. We, you know, at the beginning of the year, before the season started, we were like, this defense is going to be the you know, best of best. And then 
you know, the big first half of the year, it was killing it. And then it went after mm-hmm. Vita went out. And here during the playoffs, even without Vita, man, they have been on fire. Now, the Washington game, not so much, you know, but that was, I think that was a lot to do with, you know, we didn't have any game film on Heineke and he just played an excellent game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, he, he actually played a better game than Drew Brees and Aaron Rodgers both. Yeah. How crazy is that? Yeah. I, th- I think we, uh, I think we, Caused Aaron Rodgers to think about retirement. Oh my gosh, that post game press conference was so depressing he with was, him. Yeah, it, it I mean, destroyed. he looked done. He looked done. He just, you know, mm-hmm. and I mean, it. You do get emotional at, right after a game like this and a loss like this, but I mean, he was like, "I just need to take some time away and think about things." And yeah, you were sitting there the whole thing. You kept <laughs> yelling at me. Aaron Rodgers is going to retire. <laughs> I would not be shocked. Retire. I also would not be shocked if he comes back. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. I know it's just kind of an emotional thing, but just for him to be considering it yeah. at all, I think it's kind of a, a big tell. A lot of people were talking about the penalties, you know, that we. The salty Packers fans on Twitter, <laughs> that's who was talking about the penalties. And actually, Aaron Rodgers did mention it in his press conference. Salty but. Aaron Rodgers. And, you know, they are right to a degree. The refs really let the guys play. They didn't. We, we had two penalties on us. One, mm-hmm. Sue was offsides, and another one, SMB got a uh, a personal foul for lowering his helmet, which God, I just hate that rule. It is so, again, it's another one of those objective rules or subjective rules where sometimes they call it, sometimes they don't, mm-hmm. you know, and – but, that, but other than that, we didn't have any other penalties. And that didn't happen until the second half. Yeah, it was like, late. I mean, they yeah. hadn't thrown a single flag Mm-mm. until the second half. Yeah. I think we had two penalties for like 11 yards or something. Two for eight. And they had four for 30. So Yeah, very clean game. Very clean game. But the refs did let a lot of stuff slide. It was holding. We saw plenty of holding. I saw... Uh, uh, False starts that they didn't call, mm-hmm. both on us and on the Packers. I saw some defensive pass interference they didn't call. Uh, intentional grounding on Rodgers they didn't call, of course. Oh, man. I, I was one. yelling they in the bar. I, <laughs> I was like, that was intentional grounding. He was in the pocket. Threw it right uh, out of the end zone. Yeah. Like, what? You can't do that. Uh, let me see. Uh, face mask. We grabbed somebody's face mask when we tackled him. That wasn't called. Uh, let me see. Whose side are you on? Well, I mean, it was both sides, though. It was okay. both sides. The refs were just very hands off in this game, and I liked it. I liked it. Yeah, I liked it especially because we won. Yeah, me too. <laughs> C plus. <laughs> I gave the refs get a C pro. plus. <laughs> Anytime we win, the refs get a C plus. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, great game. It was really a good game. I was sweating it there for a while. You know, they came back, got within five of us. You know, at one point we were 28-10. We had about 18 points, right? And, you know, I thought, you know, we got this. We got this. Yeah, twenty. Yeah, 21, 28-10, yes, in the and third then, quarter. Yeah, and then they uh, came back and got within five. And then they, man, they really screwed up. You know, they kicked that, that field kick. goal. I know. I know. Why would you do that? Fourth I just... quarter with two minutes left and you kick a field goal? Uh, every Packer fan on the planet should be furious about yeah. that. But it, there's no guarantee they would have got it if they would have went for it on fourth down because we were just killing it in the red zone. Yeah. We had two drives where they were within the 10-yard line and we shut them out. They had to kick field goal. But, I mean, the field goal didn't do anything for them. Like, it didn't it really. Didn't do nothing. I mean, yeah. if they had scored a touchdown, they would have been beating us rather than tied. Right? Well, they st- they would have had got yeah they no they would have tied because they were we were up by eight at that point okay and they they kicked a field goal and they needed five points yeah but like, so if they had scored another touchdown after needing five points then they would have been leading us yes theoretically but they didn't do that right um yeah I want to talk more about the defense do it okay <laughs> uh SMB oh man like how fire. ridiculous is he. 
Thank right. God. I'm just, again, it's just one of those things where, can you imagine if we hadn't made it this far in the playoffs and mm-hmm. he had ended his season the way that he did? Everyone yep. would have been calling to bench get him, him. Yep. get rid of him, replace him. And he we went, went to Seattle him. and killed it. I know. I know. <laughs> Something like that. Exactly. <laughs> and so for him to get this kind of redemption in the playoffs, it's just amazing. And, you know, he got another interception this game. This is his third. It broke a record. Post- yeah. first well, time he's ever- tied for first. Oh, really? Yeah. What is but it? there's like five in first place. But nobody's had three in a row, right? Or was it? I think it's just three postseason interceptions. Yeah. So stat. he's still got he's still got another week. I know he has another Man, game. Yeah. I want I want this to be a 2002 Super Bowl where we just come out defensively, and just dominate. You know, from the first go, it's done. But you know, it's Kansas City Chiefs. So that's going to be kind of hard to do. Yeah, it's going to be tough. I'll say this: it is the two best teams in the Super Bowl. And our defense no is going to be is playing just top notch, and they were not when we mm-hmm. saw them the first time. No, no. And no. we have Vita back. They've gone down. We've gone up. Yeah, yeah. And with Vita back, oh gosh, they don't have, they don't stand a chance. Over. All right, let's talk about the fumble, the forced fumble with uh, Whitehead. Oh yes, got his helmet. Uh, you know, popped out. Yes. You know, I was when Winfield right before the game, like an hour before the game, they said he's not playing. So we were like, oh, my gosh, you know, what's going to be? It's going to be Whitehead and Adams. Mike Edwards. <clears throat> Mike Edwards. So we're like, okay, okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah, like and then, Mike. you know, Whitehead's out there. Is, he's a missile. He I reminds know. me of John he Lynch. Is. Just a missile. Have you seen a picture of him, too? The dude is, like, jacked, like, bodybuilder jacked. Really? Like, his traps right here are just ridiculous. Like, Isn't he looks the w- like one of those oxen on stair, <laughs> like those show steeds that they have. <laughs> like, what, like the veins calling. and everything. He's just ridiculous. Show steed, whitehead. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they, they talked about him in the offseason. Everybody was like, we're trying to uh, get our bodies like whitehead. Yeah. Remember they were like, he's, he's just so jacked. built. He's jacked. But yeah, man, he comes flying in, bam. But then... I don't think it was that play. It, it, it was a tackle a couple plays later. He got hurt, and he was out for the mm-hmm. game. And that's when I panicked. I was like, oh, no. Mm-hmm. You know, Andrew Adams coming in. And, and we had to tell the Buck fans that we were watching with who had Andrew Adams was. Nobody knew who he was. We were yeah. like, it's triple A. He got three interceptions well, on and then Cam Newton. Devon Hagan, too. Mm-hmm. And, but, you know, that's what I was like, oh, my gosh. You know, we're going up against Aaron Rodgers here, mm-hmm. and our safeties are you know, not our regular starters. But, uh, you know, they held up. They held up, man. Got to hand, got to hand it to these guys. They just, they played lights out. And before the uh, playoffs, I think it was Devin White in one of his press conferences. They had asked him about what's the identity of this defense, and he said, "Identity of these these defense is what Bruce Arian said. We make plays. We make plays. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's exactly what they are, man. They are playmakers. And I, that's how I felt every time that the Packers got the ball." That I mean, you heard me every time. I was like, "We're gonna do something here. We're gonna do something." Here. Man, we, and we just did great. I mean, we were shutting them out three and outs, punts, interceptions, fumbles, uh, sacks. Yeah, every drive. And Devin great. White recovering that fumble was awesome. Like he's just always he's Perfect. so great at that. Like he did it against the Saints too, mm-hmm. and he just has an eye for it. Like just kind of a ball hawk. Like he knows where it is all the time. Kind of like Levante. Levante. Was. Mm-hmm. But he led the team in tackles. He had 15 tackles. Whoa. Gosh, he led it last week too, didn't he? I know. Didn't he have and 15 s- last week? Yeah. And so that is Man, uh, tackles. the most ever for a Bucks player in a postseason game. Wow. So setting records. Yeah, we're setting records all over the place. Yeah, Tom Brady beat Brad Johnson's touchdown record. Pass bound, passing touchdowns in the postseason. What, did he have three? Um, early in the game, this was like his first touchdown, I think. He had five. He had five passing, touchdowns? Not in the game, but in the postseason. Oh, oh okay. And so Damn, I, the, I think the first touchdown pass, he matched this record, and then he mm-hmm. got more after that. So I, I don't know what he's up to, but he's certainly broken that record. Yeah, we had we had some great plays. The first drive, that bomb to Evans. That was beautiful. Beautiful. Laid right in there. Two defenders coming. Boop. Right in the bread basket. That was beautiful. And then that Fournette 20-yard 
Oh, that was oh, awesome. That was I beautiful. love those kind of runs. Those kind of runs will just energize a team. Yeah. Like he was uh, not going down. Uh, uh, that little spin movie did. I thought Even they the were going to have were him. Like, yeah. I thought they'd have him, but they did not. You know, on that drive, that was Mike Evans's best drive right there. You know, he had that big long bomb and then he had the touchdown in that drive. And then after that, you know, I got to say this, man, our dropped passes. If we, we, uh, we had seven drop passes that I counted. Uh, let me see. We had two by Fournette on the first drive. I know. He dropped that thing like a hot potato. Like it was right in his <laughs> hands. I don't want and it. He, I know. Not it. <laughs> Not it. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Uh, we had one drop pass by Johnson, one drop pass by Godwin, and then uh, two by Evans, and one of them was for an interception. Bounced right and, off his uh, hands. Scotty Miller, too, had one off of his hands, I think. That was one of the other interceptions. Okay. Or well, Godwin? Then that, then that would, it was Godwin. Was Scotland. I don't think that was an interception, though. No, I think one of the interceptions was off, was off of Scotty's hands, too. I don't remember. It Didn't was it? right at the end zone, too. That was Evans. You sure? Okay. Pretty sure. All right. Yeah. All right. Because he, he was at the end zone. Okay. Uh, so that was seven dropped passes. You know, if we just, you know, I've been saying this all year long. If we just cut our drop passes in half, we would be destroying people. Know. You know? Yeah. Uh, I, do, I do not know what's going on. I have no idea. The only thing I could come up with, and I was thinking about this uh, before the game, is that just Tom Brady, maybe he just throws it so hard. It it mm-hmm. doesn't, you know, his passes don't look particularly like a rocket, but there's some reason why these guys just can't. I mean, it's right in their hands. Well, if you look at his throwing motion, like he, there's a lot of force behind his yeah. throws. Like he torques his whole body. And especially yeah, got, those long bombs, like he's using a lot of torque. So. Yeah, yeah, he's got like perfect mechanics, so yeah. he gets a lot of torque. He throws from the ground, man, just mm-hmm. from the ground up. Uh, so, yeah, that that was really the uh, the only weak spot on our team was the drop passes. Yeah, but and then but I then think mostly would... because two of them led to interceptions, hmm. and the you know the third one was a bad pass by Brady. Yeah, well, that was the that was the one where Fournette missed picking up the blitzer, oh. and the guy was right in Brady, and Brady just chunked it. You know, he threw it up to Mike Evans, and Mike Evans wasn't really paying attention, and it got intercepted. Yeah, but the, you know, they were basically just punts. You know, right? That's all the interceptions were. That's what I kept saying at the bar. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's just a punt. It's just a punt. And they didn't. They couldn't do anything with it. It didn't matter. No, not, no, that didn't score any points off turnovers. No. Uh, uh, I've never yeah. seen a turnover margin or the turn yeah turnover margin lopsided like that, and you win the game. Yeah. Like with Jameis, what we had all last year, it was like as soon as he turned it over, and you know that was over. It yes. was over basically. And so we had three; they only had two. One was a fumble. One was an interception. Wow, that was a beautiful interception. Beautiful interception. SMB caught that ball. He caught the ball, and the receiver thought he had it. The receiver I thought, thought the receiver he caught the ball. Yeah. yeah, everybody did. I was like, I even the receiver. No he was. It was like he took it right out of his hands, practically, and it was a fingertip. Gra- oh, oh, yeah, man, that was beautiful. Mm-hmm. He is really, really. Why is up. he not on the offense? Like he could be a receiver, <laughs> right? Maybe he could catch. But you know, I talk about the guys dropping the ball, but man, they made some spectacular plays. That Godwin catch. Okay, that Godwin catch was so confusing to me because here it was. He's catching this shit like over his head, bobbling it, falling to the ground. There's a receiver right there that he bumps into. Mm-hmm. All this, and he can make that catch. He can but make that one. The ones right into his hands. There, no, no good. It's, it's a psychological just, thing, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. But, I mean, I was extremely happy. And Godwin was our leading receiver. He had 110 yards. Dang. Nice. So, you know, you're like, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Y'all, y'all, you can have a drop ball with that. I know. I know. Uh, the... And, and that was a no risk it, no biscuit. I was I was screaming that all throughout the bar, too. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> Like every third down, I was like, "No risk it, no biscuit." And man, if we didn't quite a few times, you know, that that was a third and nine play, and we got sixty yards because yeah. we just bombed it. I know, you know, just threw it deep. So awesome! And Chris Godwin like competing with that defender and actually knocking him off the play. 
Yeah. But Chris was looking back. Like, I don't think it should have been pass interference because he was looking back. No, he was, yeah, he was staring at the ball the whole yeah. time. Yeah. The defender should have been looking back. Mm hmm. And that was, that. that was the, the very next play was Fournette's 20 yard run right after that. And yeah. It was like so sweet. I know. But okay. we flipped the field. I think we started at the 20, like the 28 uh, through that pass. I think it was a four play drive. <laughs> oh, four what? plays, 75 yards. It's some crap like that, that is dude. ridiculous. Yeah. What? Yeah, there was a, there was a lot of crazy stuff in this game. And it was it was a great game. It was a really good game. Um, we oh, didn't I... we didn't lose the lead. I don't think we've lost the lead since the Atlanta game, uh, the week fourteen, fifteen. That's crazy. The second half of the Atlanta game. I think it's the last time we've not had the lead. I think I'm not sure about the New Orleans game. I know that's what I was thinking. Um, but I don't think they ever got ahead of us. So, you know. Right, it was tied. Mm-hmm. Um, That's incredible. Not just that we've won seven in a row, but we haven't lost the lead in five games. And to win That's, like that at Lambeau, I they know. are 8-1 and one at home this not season. A, not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> They're 8-2 and, and lost the most important one. Oh, my gosh. How about that fourth and three right before halftime? Right when it fourth yes. and three? Yep. Where we just, no biscuit, no biscuit, touchdown yep. to Scotty Miller. Yep. Uh, that, I love that play call. I did too, yeah. Uh, we were six for six on third downs and the right before the half. And then there was third and nine. We had an incomplete pass, but uh, we were killing it on third downs. You know what? I think we did lose the lead. What, against New Orleans? Oh, no. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. I was just looking at the score here. Yeah. So, that the the play call right before halftime, I did not expect it. I know. You know. And, and that was a third down, right? I think it was a fourth down. I think it was fourth and three. And. Yep. You were right. And I, I feel like we haven't seen a whole lot of those. No, that this was season. No, that it was fourth and three, and we went for it. Fournette ran it, got the first down, and then right after that, with six seconds left, we hit uh, Scotty Miller. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, and I just don't recall in the regular season us having a lot of these uber aggressive plays like that. Mm-mm. No, it just popped up right in the, right at the best time, right yeah. in the, the playoffs. Yeah, we, we this defense has definitely taken it to heart that they are playmakers. You know, they're going to make plays, and I love that. You know, it, it's as it's ex, as exciting watching our defense as it is as watching our offense. I know, and sometimes even more so. Yes, I agree. I it agree. Reminds me a lot of the uh, championship Buccaneers from two thousand two. That whole reign we had from like nineteen ninety seven to two thousand three, where. You know, our defense was did you enjoyed watching them more than you did the offense, you know. They just go out there and just make plays and score. Good grief. After Vita went out during the season, that's how I found it at the beginning of the season, and then Vita went out and midway midway in the season, I did not feel that way about the defense anymore. There it was you know, there were a few games where they were a little shaky and seemed like a liability at times, but I feel like they are all clicking right now, and everyone is rising to the occasion. So this is the perfect time for it. And I really can't wait to see them against Kansas City because I don't feel like they played that way against Kansas City the first time. Although we did end up shutting Patrick Mahomes down towards the end of the game, or in the second half. I think that's one of the few games this season where we adjusted at halftime. Mm-hmm. And were able to shut Pat Mahomes down. So. Now you're right. Uh, New Orleans did get ahead of us in the third quarter. It was 20 like to 13. like three though, right? It wasn't. It was 13-13, and then they scored a touchdown 20-13 to 13 with 9.43 left, and then we okay. tied it up and then took it from there. That was the last points they scored. Gotcha. So I was wrong. We We did not hold the lead for – Four minutes <laughs> in seven oh, games. How incredible is this? But, you know, I will say with the Packers game, like, there wasn't 
that moment where we were like, okay, mm. this is over. Yeah. It wasn't <laughs> until, until we got the first down at like a minute 40 where we were like, yeah. okay, we can run the clock out. Which that series was really strange because we, you know, we got the ball with two minutes and like four seconds left. They had three timeouts plus the two-minute warning. And then there was penalties, and then they uh, – uh, there, there, there was something – oh, there was a review, and then – Oh, yeah, that was weird. I it, still didn't understand, and we were at the bar, and, and it was muted, so we couldn't hear what he was talking about. I don't know if it was muted, but we were just too damn loud. <laughs> we, were, we were an obnoxious crew, man. <laughs> And yeah, so it was very strange. So it, it, you kept going, okay, we got this, we got this, and then it was like just like prolonged there for the last. But it, there was uh, a minute and thirty-seven seconds left, and they had one timeout, and we needed a first down. Uh, Fournette ran it for a yard. Uh, no, yeah, he ran it for a negative one yard. Then the second down, he ran it for one yard, and then Godwin got that toss sweep and got the first down. Nine yards on it. So it was just like, and that was over. That was over. But that was the only, that that right there, that run was when we went, okay, we can, we can finally breathe. Because at that point, they were only down five. Yeah. Nine, I mean, three, they could have got the ball back. And you know, Aaron Rodgers, mm -hmm. he can, you know, give him yeah. a minute and 30 seconds. Pfft, that's all day for him. Yeah. He could easily do that. So it was nerve wracking. And yeah, I did not feel like it was over until. Basically, I think we ran the clock out and there was like one second left. And then it was just, it was down. Everybody started running out on the field. <laughs> that, that Cameron Bray touchdown, it was in the uh, third quarter. That was a beautiful play. Uh, we schemed him open. And that, he was he was totally wide open in the end zone. I don't remember that play at all. I have no, I had no idea Cameron Bray had a touchdown. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I need to rewatch the game. You watched it earlier. Normally we would do it together, but that was a uh, that was right after uh, Whitehead caused the fumble. Okay, Devin White picked it up, ran it, and then the, the play right after that. Oh, it happened so fast. Mm -hmm. That was an issue. I think I was still celebrating the fumble. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> missed the touchdown completely. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then the next defensive drive. That's when Whitehead got hurt. And then uh, their tight end, Tanya, and he got a touchdown. And I was like, oh, crap, here we go. And then Brady threw an interception on our next offensive drive. And then they're, they're, they scored a touchdown and then tried the two-point conversion and failed. And then, you know, then that's when, it's, it, that's when it got scary. It was 28-23 with, you know, going into the fourth quarter. It was like, crap. I thought they didn't score off of the, touch, uh, the, the turnovers. No, apparently they did. Hmm. Yeah. And then, and then, oh yeah, and then start the fourth quarter off. Our all, next offensive drive, Brady throws another interception. And then, uh, let's see, that's what Barrett just dominated the next series. He he hit Rodgers on throw, causing their pass. Then he got a sack on third down, causing them to punt. And then Brady comes out there again. Another interception. Yeah, the I'm looking at the play by play. Yeah, so you're right. The first interception led to a touchdown. The, the second one <laughs> led to a negative five yards and a punt. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And the third one was uh, zero yards and a punt. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and then yeah, they come back out there. Barrett gets another sack on first down, and then they end up having to punt again. Then we drive down the field, score a field goal. And then uh, they get the ball, and they, they drive down to the red zone, and we held them. And that's when they should have gone for it on fourth down. I, can't, I couldn't believe that. I couldn't. I was like, what are they doing? Are they not trying to win this game? Bizarre. It, it was, was very weird. bizarre. And the coaches in the press conference – well. Uh, Rogers did not want to talk about it, basically. <laughs> talk about what? That play? Yeah, that play. Oh, that's right. Like, what he thought about it. You were telling me that the he acted like he couldn't hear the reporter. <laughs> I don't know. They have some issue with their Zoom calls because some of the other guys were having issues hearing it, too. Even though you could hear it on the press conference and there was something wrong with their audio. But um, LaFleur, like, 
I don't know. No, nobody really wanted to talk about it. Someone said that Lafleur kind of threw one of his coaches under the bus with that one, but I'm like, no, that's on Lafleur. Like, <laughs> what are, what are <laughs> oh yeah, it was a dumb, dumb decision. I mean, even if you don't make it, <clears throat> you've got the Buccaneers backed up on their end zone, and yeah, you, know, you could try to get the ball back. Yeah, but uh, you know, just I wasn't mad. I, I was like, I was very happy when they kicked that field goal. <laughs> I was like, well, are you seriously giving our offense the ball back? But, you know, they might have been thinking, you know, Brady just threw three interceptions, basically back-to-back, mm -hmm. you know, three offensive drives. And, you know, they thought maybe he's rattled, maybe we'll get another interception. I don't know what they were thinking, but it worked for us. I know. Well, Ralph and I both have family members, actually cousins, that were – texted us that were Packers fans through the whole thing. Mine uh, bet $5, and You'll I don't see think that I'll money. ever see that money. I told him <laughs> certified funds or cash. I had to talk to mine, mine from uh, committing suicide <laughs> by drinking herself to death. Yeah. <laughs> she was not very happy. Yeah. You know, but. and I wouldn't have talked any shit except for he initiated. So I'm like, okay. That's what he gets. That's what you get. That's what he gets. I would have been nice about it. Mm, man, Kansas City, it's going to be a tough one. Ooh. Going to be a tough one. Now, here they've got an advantage on us uh, coaching-wise, I think. Maybe, I, you I know, don't know. Offensively. Well, let's talk about the coaching, uh, especially in the playoffs, because that's what you've been saying to me in our personal conversations, is that the coaches have really made yeah. a difference this yeah. postseason. Yeah, they've really stepped it up and do, doing a lot of uh, a lot of good scheming, man. A lot of good scheming. Uh, and <clears throat> I think they'll. I think we have more film on the Chiefs as the team that they are than they have film on us as the team that we are. Because, like we've said, we've really changed during the playoffs. You know, we've changed our defensive scheme. Uh, Going into the playoffs, coming out of the bye, our offense has changed a lot. You know, we've got more Tom Brady friendly routes, and we've been running better. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, so the run game is a huge difference, and their defense isn't that great. Yeah, but they make plays too. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> but yeah, they're they're not going to be able to stop us on offense. There's nobody in the league that can stop us on offense, and you know, the, the really the big. Issue is going to be: Do we beat ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. or you know, can our defense step up and make plays? Yeah, because we're not going to stop them either, but we can make plays. You know, they're going to move down the field. Well, you know what I'm thinking is that Carlton Davis is still probably peeved that he got burned by Tyreek Hill, and he might be just thinking about that grudge the same way he thought about Michael Thomas. <laughs> Shut yeah. him down. Shut him down. Yeah. Uh, Michael Thomas, speaking of which, was talking shit the whole or tweeting from his couch while we were in the championship, <laughs> and he he, I think he said uh, something about one of the routes with a slant that Carlton got burned on for a touchdown. Yeah, it was like a video. He had retweeted it. And Carlton was talking shit back to him, which I loved. And then I guess all the Bucks fans got over and uh, Michael Thomas's mentions because then he made his account private. Yeah, he got butt hurt. I mean, that's kind of a bitch move. <laughs> it's the ultimate bitch move. Yeah. Like, you're a blue check. Like, you can make it so you don't see responses from anybody mm -hmm. except blue checks. And you're still going to make your account private. It's embarrassing. So, I am super pumped. Two weeks. Oh. Wow, it's going to be a tough two weeks, two weeks man. I know. I know. I can't wait for my JPP jersey to come in. I'm just so excited about that. Yeah. So unique. Nobody else has a JPP yeah. jersey. Yeah. We watched a video, or I watched a video of the fans lined up outside the airport welcoming the Buccaneers back. That was so cool, man. I, I, I got emotional. You know, <laughs> Did it, you? Yeah, I'm going to say a large part of it was because of the alcohol, too. But yeah. It was so cool. Mike Evans was the last one to drive out, and they mobbed his car. <laughs> and the reporter was just like freaking out. He was like, let's not be these, these type of fans. But Mike Evans apparently stopped. 
And it was funny because all the the players were driving out and they had their cell phones out recording the crowd, you know. And Evans was just like, what, hey, what's up? He had his window rolled down and everything. And, you know, the, the crowd surrounded his car. And we think he was signing autographs or something. And then the police came over there and kind of just uh, broke everybody up. And the <laughs> journalist or reporter from the local channel was all like, you know, we shouldn't be uh, gathered together with, you know, the, the virus out here. You know, we shouldn't be. <laughs> like, Every man. party needs a wet blanket. <laughs> That's how I felt. Like, dude. Because he started to walk over there and then he was like, oh, I shouldn't get that close to people. Man, come on now. So they're allowing 20 some thousand people in the Raymond James Stadium for the Super Bowl. The tickets, I got an email today, start at $8,800. That's for the nosebleed section. Is that all, all? All the way down to 20. That's per person. All the way down to, or all the way up to 22,000. That's going to get you the 50 yard line. I was like, man, wish I was rich. I know. Just, just throw away fifty thousand dollars like that. God, insane. Yeah. Hey, but that's the world we live in now. You know, the the Hunger Games world. Well, Elite get to we do are stuff gonna like that. go out with the rest of the plebes and to a bar. Same bar. We made a lot of friends these past two weeks. Yeah. In the bar. Yeah, got a little crew going. Yeah, we got a crew. and It's just so hard for me to watch because I I will, you know, when the the plays happen, I don't don't give a crap between plays, you know, when the announcer's going, you know, that's when I start talking to everybody and hooting and hollering or whatever. But when the play's happening, I'm focused on the TV, you know. I can't stand when people talk to me while the play's going on or I'm trying to do. That's why we generally avoid going out because – you know, I like to like really seriously watch the game, but uh, well, it's easier now because we have the NFL game pass. Game pass, right? yeah, yeah. So we can just rewatch it. That's normally what we do. Well, we have to do that when we watch it at home anyway, because we forget to pay attention sometimes at home. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever. So what is everybody doing for Super Bowl? Uh, leave us a comment or let us know if there's anything in the area let us know we are we pretty much got what we're going to do planned but it's not set in stone um yeah tell it let us know what you do i mean if you what i would like to do is rent out a theater and you know have a bunch of buccaneer fans go and have it like a spread food have a whole theater they're not, cool. they're not that expensive to rent out. But it, could they broadcast the Super Bowl? Yeah. That, you might have to pay for it, but... Yeah. I, I don't know. It, it'd be in the uh, the fee, whatever it is. But they're, they're not that expensive to rent out. But I, I don't feel like spending $500,000. <laughs> I'd just rather go to the bar and spend a hundred. I know. And they already got all the booze and the food there. So it'd be cool though, man, because I mean this is a big event. It's a big event. It, I know. it hasn't happened in twenty years. <sighs> I know. I it's only feel happened like once, I put too. in a lot of work. So it's been a grind to get to this point. It's been all mostly lows <laughs> for me. <laughs> Twelve years. I've been slugging it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you hung in there, man. We got to, we, you know, pat ourselves on the back, all of us Buck fans. You know, I mean, we have stuck in there. And all you new Buck fans, welcome, welcome aboard, uh, Scallywags. You know, we, this is, this is an awesome team. Awesome, awesome team. Got great ownership, great coaching. And, uh, you know, we've been trying, we've been trying, but we've had good teams, good players. Things have happened. A lot of a uh, lot of stuff out of the control of the teams too, you know. Just, mm-hmm. but I here we are, to, man. I try to make a post on Twitter today to really just encapsulate the moment, but not, nothing I said sounded right or did it justice. You know, it, it was hard to describe the feeling. 
especially in short form. We need to do like a long form article <laughs> or something. <laughs> <laughs> Write a book. The sufferings of Buck fans. But like this is why sports are so great and so important because you know, they do. They bring joy to people and you know, they they give you a sense of community and uh entertainment. Mm -hmm. just, I I do think that they're necessary. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of bonding that goes on. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that whole in group stuff and you know, and it, humans we have an innate desire to be a part of something larger than ourselves and, and sports allows that to be an outlet. Mm -hmm. You know. I mean, in your tribe, you get a tribe. You get a tribe, yeah. And it's for the most part it's just war play. You know, mm -hmm. and, you know, there's not a lot of violence between fans or teams. Uh, so, you know, we, we, it's a war mentality without the violence. Mm -hmm. you know, so that's what you need. You need outlets like that for a society where they just start eating each other. Alive. I know. <laughs> just start fight, fighting each other. <laughs> oh, man, I can't believe it. I mean, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. And we're going to show you probably in the next podcast or so why exactly it is that I can say that, that we can believe that we got here. We got a long history of saying this is exactly what was going to happen. I think we even called the chiefs. We were going to play the chiefs. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to rack up those receipts for a podcast. We got two weeks to come up with podcast stuff. And it's going to be kind of hard. We'll, we'll talk a lot about the, you know, there's going to be a crap ton of media interviews with all these guys. You mm -hmm. know, about everybody on the team is going to get interviewed. <laughs> Vita always always watches videos because you learn something. <laughs> that's that's his thing. He's always learning. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen an interview without with him where he wasn't. I'm learning. I'm learning something. Uh, we get to see Sue talk again. God, we haven't seen him talk since he got. Uh, assigned by us. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, he's not a big media guy. He doesn't like the media. Or it's not that he doesn't like the media. He's just more of a, I like my performance to speak for, speak itself. for itself. Yeah. 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 It was fun watching all the stories on Instagram from the players where they're showing like the locker room celebrations and the, uh, that they a lot of them showed the airport clips, so that was cool. Did you see there was one celebration where the defense they were in front of the camera on the field, you know, like the touchdown camera, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and they were all doing the boat, and SMB was right beside them, and he did a Michael Jackson no. impersonation, and then he was too late uh, to get into the boat because they lost. Uh, oh, oh no! Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we had five players that played 100% of the snaps on defense. Really? Yeah. yeah it's, that's a little bit more than normal. We had uh, Devin White, Mike Edwards, uh, SMB, Levante David, and Carlton Davis all played 100%. That's uh, Barrett played 90%. Dang. JPP played 86%. Uh, Jamal Dean, 77%. Vita Vea played 46%, 33 snaps. Yeah. That was a lot more than I thought he was going to do. I know. They said he was going to play like 20. Mm-hmm. But he must be back to form. Yeah, he um, looks. Basically. Yeah. He's, go he's going to be such a dominant force in the Super Bowl. I really hope he gets a lot of recognition in the Super Bowl. The announcers pointed him out a couple times during this game, but I I I'd like to see him have a Dominant, dominant game in the Super Bowl. I think uh, he it's looks like he's be Romo announcing. So we'll see. Hmm. Well, good. He can he can complain about the lack of our pre snap motion again. <laughs> the Vita looked a little like he's gained some some chubbiness to him, mm -hmm. like he was sitting on the couch why. a lot eating. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, he had a few rolls in places he didn't have before. <laughs> His pants might have been a little tighter this go around. <laughs> Uh, but that that took away from Nacho's plays. Nacho only had thirty two percent of the plays, and McClendon had thirty percent. He had twenty one snaps. Anthony Nelson had thirteen snaps, which was eighteen percent of the plays. Cam Gill got four in. 
Uh, Patrick O'Connor, none. Really? He, yeah, he was relegated to special teams. Special team. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, same with Minter and Hagen, Buchanan, Cockrell, uh, even Josh Wells. They didn't get any snaps hmm. except special teams. Normally they'll get in for a couple, but yeah, not this game. We had too many players we wanted to get out there. Yeah, no kidding. It was a, uh, it was it was a great. It was a great game. It, I don't think anybody can watch that game and our performance against the Saints and not say that we aren't the best team in the NFL. We definitely deserve to go to the Super Bowl. No question about that. I mean, we we pretty much dominated both teams. Yeah. And those aren't, you know, that they're not slackers. Mm-hmm. You know, these are Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers led teams. They, the Packers were 13-3. and three. This is the second time in the year that they've been 13-3, and three, went to the NFC Championship and lost. Yeah. And, I mean, they were the number one seed. Number one seed. And the Saints, they were number two, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we just, we steamed rolled number two and number one. Yeah. Heading toward KFC. We are the best or in the top two of the whole league. So yeah. we got that going for us. We might be number one. What do you mean might be? What do you yeah. mean might be? I'm going to be doing, that's all I'm going to be doing this week. <laughs> After I get this all 22 out of the way from this game, I'm just diving into Kansas City, man. Yes. I want to see it. it. Which is great because they're really fun to watch. You know, they yeah, they're a, exciting. Yeah, they do a lot of funky stuff on offense. And defense, too. You know, they, they're they hard, uh, hard to, they disguise a lot of stuff like we do. So. Well, I like that our defense is going to have two weeks to really study, get a game plan going. Yeah, and, you know, that's one thing about Andy Reid. You know, he's he's lost the Super Bowls before. Mm -hmm. You know, he's he's pretty good at getting to the playoffs. He's also pretty good at (laughs) losing in the playoffs. Well, that was his first win last year. Yep. He never won a Super Bowl. Never won a Super Bowl before that. And who'd they play? 49ers, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I don't know if the 49ers were the best team last year. This year, the two best teams are in the Super Bowl. So this is going to be a really big uh, decider of who's better, the AFC or the NFC. Yeah. The old guard or the new guard. But yeah. you, if you look at it, if you match up player for player, position for position, we are the better team. You know. On the stat sheet. Yeah. Yeah, you look at it on paper, we're the better team. Yeah. And you know, if you ask me, we just the better team. We're gonna do it. You know, Mahomes has had a very successful career. And it's one of the one of the things I talked about with Jameis Winston when we first got him. I said, you know, my big fear with Jameis Winston is he's had a successful career. He's he doesn't lose. He doesn't he you know, he's never had a losing season. What's that going to be like when he does lose? Because he's going to lose. This is the NFL. You're going to lose. You know, it's not like he's going to go like he did in college and just blow through everybody and go to the championship. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, I, you know, I, th- I think he handled it pretty well. But you know, he never got to the playoffs. Mahomes has kind of had that same thing. He's he's been successful ever since he's been in the NFL. If we come out there and start punching him in the mouth, how's he going to handle it? Mm-hmm. You know, it, I'm curious what teams they've lost to. I I've seen them here and there through the season. I mean, we watched them against New Orleans. We watched them against Atlanta. I mean, we played them. So I've watched them a little bit, and I don't feel like this season they are as dominant as they were last season. Like this season, they're not blowing teams out by 40 points like yeah. they did in the playoffs last season. Well, they just caught everybody by surprise with. You know, Mahomes exactly, and, and it's like with those running quarterbacks, especially once you get enough film on them. I mean, it's hard to surprise a team anymore. Yeah, and your quarterback ends up getting beat up, which Mahomes is now. He's got turf toe, which that can be career the, ending. Yeah, that that's a huge, huge factor because from what I understand, I ain't never had it. It hurts, so you know they're gonna have to be pumping him full of uh, painkillers. Well, and he's got two weeks to recover, too, so we have to remember that. But, I mean, like with Carl Nix that we had, that we got from the Saints, that offensive lineman, he never recovered. Yeah, I mean, it which was is like a shame. whole thing. Yeah, he was you know, probably months. 
the best offensive lineman offense. I've ever seen. He was just so dominant. Yeah. Uh, the the Chiefs ended up with fourteen and two record. They lost to the Raiders, and they lost to the Chargers. Okay, so two division opponents. Yeah, and the Chargers' loss was Week Seventeen. So. Oh, okay. You know, they were already in the playoffs and they didn't care. Yeah, and they I, I think they probably had a home field advantage already clinched. Weren't, yeah. they, the, weren't they the number one seed? Yeah. yeah. Won't that be cool, too? Like, we got through the number one seed of the NFC, and now we can get through the number one seed of the AFC. Yeah. It'd be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah, they haven't really blown out opponents as bad as they did last year. They they blew out the Jets thirty five to nine, but they didn't score over thirty. Uh, they scored once. They scored forty three points once, but other than that, they're right around thirty thirty points. Thirty four, twenty three, thirty four, twenty six, thirty two, twenty six, forty three, thirty five, thirty three, thirty five, twenty seven. I mean, they score points. The yeah. lowest was seventeen, but that's exactly the way we are too. Yeah. I think our lowest was. 17. Yeah. Well, three when we played the Saints. But that was an outlier. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, was, <laughs> that one don't count. Yeah, we, don't talk, we don't talk about that one. <laughs> it doesn't doesn't fit the narrative, so we're just going to throw that one no. right out the window. Uh-uh. Oh, you want to talk about our score predictions for this game? Yeah, what did we do? Okay, so you predicted 35-27. I predicted 32-29. And the score was a 31-26. So you were almost spot on. Yeah. Good yeah. You were close too. You were close. You don't give it don't you don't have to be sympathetic for me. <laughs> give me a consolation prize. <laughs> yeah, here here's our scores. We did 23, 31, 28, 38, 19, 38, 45, 25, 3, 46, 24, 24, 26, 31, 47, 44. Damn, we scored, we had four games of 40 plus points. Holy crap. They had one yeah, game yeah. of 40. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. But I think their average is higher than ours. Probably. You know, but I'm just, I want to see a good game. Yeah, and sco- I don't, I feel like this is a great matchup, and I don't think it's going to be a blowout either way. Yeah, if it is, I hope it's us blowing them out. I know. <laughs> no, I, I agree with you. I think both of these teams can come back. They, I mean, they can pop off scores quick. Yeah. You know, but then I felt the same way about Green Bay. You yeah. know, it's like mm-hmm. I mean, they can pop off a touchdown in Absolutely. You know, just a couple of plays. Well, and that's the thing about when you get to the playoffs, you are facing the cream of the crop. We right. are seeing the best teams in the league. And the fact of the matter is that we've gotten through them. Yeah, convincingly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. and I think we catch a lot of people off guard because they haven't been paying attention, or you know they saw all of our primetime games where we did not play that well, and you know most of those games were prior to the bye. I think all of them were before the bye, mm. and so I mean the majority of people have not seen us at our best. Yeah, yeah, you're talking about like uh, football fans. Yeah, yeah. football fans, pundits, whoever. Yeah, and it's awesome. And we talked about this at the beginning of the year and throughout the season, how our defense is really going to surprise a lot of people and there's going to be the opportunity for these guys to make names for themselves. And they're doing it. I mean, Devin White. I know Devin White. You know, he, he's... SMB. Just, yeah, right. It's SMB. And this game, Jack Barrett and JPP just lit the... the the Green Bay Packers have how many sacks on the season? 20? Oh, 25. They've allowed 25 sacks. Yeah. Ten of those are from the <laughs> Buccaneers. They've had, uh, what was it, five, six, seven, seven interceptions, including the postseason, and uh, uh, six, I think. Six, six yeah. interceptions, and three of them for us. So <laughs> half the interceptions and almost half the sacks. Yeah. Their whole season are from I Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think Green Bay fans hate us so much. Like we've yeah. made a lot of enemies. This <laughs> yeah. So this season. you, you, everybody watching these games that really haven't followed the Buccaneers are thinking, oh, you know, Tom Brady, Mike Evans, Antonio Brown, Gronkowski. 
But that's not what's been winning us these playoff games. Mm-hmm. It's been our defense. Mm-hmm. So I think you're right. People are going to watch this and be like, holy crap, who are these guys? Yeah. You know, their, their defense is really good. Uh, you know, and it's it's good because I don't want us to win the Super Bowl and every se- everybody say, oh, it was because of Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it. Tom Brady is a huge factor in it. Absolutely. Let's not get it wrong, but his defense is good, and our whole offensive line is good. Our run game is good. Our wide receivers are good. We've got a good team. So well rounded. There are our weakness and special teams, and it's not even. You know, it's not the main players on special teams that are actually quite good. I mm-hmm. mean, Bradley Pinion is a stud. Yeah. Brian yeah, Suckup you know. has been solid. You know, we finally have a kicker. We broke that Matt mm-hmm. Bryant curse. It's kind of the other guys in the trenches. So yeah. for the liability to be like that far down, <laughs> I mean, right. that's great. Yeah. And, you know, I was thinking about that. You know, it's, it's perplexed me all year as to why our special teams kick and punt Tackling and blocking has been not, you know, uh, at least average. It's, mm-hmm. it's a little below average. It's the only part of our team where, you, you know, we're not above average. And I think it's because Bradley Pinion is so good at kicking it through the end zone that they just don't practice tackling a lot on, spe- yeah, on kickoffs. Yeah, they don't really have to. Yeah. They're just like, he's not going to. And that's what New Orleans did. Uh what is his name? Devontae? Not Devontae Adams. Um, um, Harris. Harris. He would catch the ball five, six, seven yards deep in the end zone and run it out. You know? Oh. Yeah. So okay. if they do that, but <clears throat> I think uh, in this game, they, we didn't have a single kickoff return. The, mm-hmm. the Packers did. Yeah, I don't think so either. We had like over 100 yards of kickoff yeah, return. Yeah, Pickens had a good return. That <laughs> yeah, I can had a remember. couple of good ones. Yeah. Uh, so... You know, like you said, if that's if that's the worst, you know, the weakest link on your team is the the second stringers on <laughs> special teams. You know. Don't give enough effort. Yeah, I yeah. mean, and that's it, the complaint. Yeah. And it's not that they suck; it's that no. the the effort isn't there. Right. It's just you know, it's not a a uh, a primary thing to spend a lot of energy on. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm real excited about it. The the Chiefs, uh, you know, it's gonna be see it's gonna be extremely interesting to see what Todd Bowles dials up against them because he has every game in defense dialed up, you know, a different defense that we played all year long. <laughs> Again, on this one, we didn't drop any of our outside linebackers in the. Thank God. Uh, thing that I mean, we might have, and I didn't see it. Actually, I did see uh, – it wasn't O'Connor. Nelson. Nelson. I saw Nelson drop back into coverage one time. But Barrett, I don't I don't recall seeing him. We we didn't do it a lot if we did do it. Uh, and it seems like we stuck with a lot of man coverage again. So, I don't know. It's good. It's just awesome. I'm really yeah. excited. I know. <laughs> All right, we're at an hour. Uh, we could sit here and talk about this all day long, but we're going to try to save some. We're really low energy today. and But hopefully happier than last time. Yeah, last time. I, I'm not distracted this time, so I was like, okay, well, let's get this know, done. And people kept asking us to upload the drunk one this time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we kind of mitigated that by not even a recording one. We I know. Too- I, well, I wanted to, but the game came on. Right as soon as we got home. Yeah. So I was like, oh, we got to watch this game. And then by the time the game was over, we were just like, ugh. We were celebrating. We weren't busy. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Yep. Sorry about that, man. Because that would have been a good one. We were we were three sheets to the wind, man. <laughs> <laughs> Molly came home and immediately got on the couch, bundled up, and ate the rest of her bar food. She loves bar food, man. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> like later in the night, I'm like, Hey, didn't we bring the leftovers home? She was like, "Yeah, I ate some of it." I go in there. There was one, <laughs> one cheese stick and one hot wing. Chicken wing. And you didn't even, yeah, you didn't even eat any of the hot wings. I don't like chicken wings. I was like, what, "Why did you even leave this?" this is, <laughs> just pissed me off. It's like, enough to piss you off. It's a tease, man. I ate it though. So. Yeah, so shut up. 
<laughs> All right, yeah, so so we're not getting divorced. We're still together. Okay. And uh, we're very happy about the Buccaneers going to the Super Bowl. Yeah. As well as all the Buccaneer fans are. Gosh, we're going to get so many fans. It's going to be great. And it, it, we, you know, we preach about this, and we haven't done it as much lately. But, you know, the, the reason why you want a big fan base is because then you get more primetime games, you know, you get more viewership, you get you get more attention in the national media and all that good stuff. You know, because I mean, look at Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys have sucked for a decade, and they're still getting primetime games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? every it's like, time. Yeah, and uh, you know, you get players that want to come to teams that have large fan bases and all that mm-hmm. good stuff. So it it helps out. It's 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 vital to have a big active fan base so i'm really excited that we're going to show up in the super bowl and just gather more fans you know you know people that watched that game last night that were not fans of a team or were looking for a team they're buccaneer fans now because that was a great performance by us man some Mm -hmm. great catches some great runs some great defense good tackling it's aaron Rodgers. like it's aaron Rodgers. dang love it all right we're gonna wrap this up molly got anything else to say no idea. Okay. Got the Kansas City Chiefs coming up. Uh, we got a lot of podcasts between now and then. Going to kick out some videos. Uh, you know, once I get this all 22 out of the way, I'll be free to delve into some fun, uh, unusual stuff that we don't normally do. So that'll be interesting. Excited about it. Got two weeks, man. Two weeks. It's a long two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Until next time, guys. Go Bucks.